going live. Are we live? We're live. Oh, oh, goodness. We're oh, live. They're picking up on us already. There we go. Oh, my goodness. They're all getting very, very <laughs> sneaky in their old age, that's for sure. Good evening, everybody. We are Grawl Pub Medics. We are going to be talking about diabetes, and I am delighted to be here with Dr. Brendan Clark and Dr. Connor Brady. Lads, how are you? I am very, very well. Very well. I've got the heating on at the moment, and I'm absolutely sweating. But aside that, it's a, it's a good complaint. Very cold where we are at the moment. Uh, when I say cold, it's not like, you know freezing cold but it's cold it's like two degrees or something what about you guys it's, is it still cold over in england cold but not too bad what light about frost. you friend in light the wild light sure? frost light oh, frost it's nice do, in the do, you, do, you, do you know what i actually heard um down in the southeast of the country ticks are mm. out ticks what? are out no. they're Already? absolutely out they're, this whole thing about you know three mm. days 10 degrees um or more day and night and they start coming out and people are already reporting them in the southeast thank god wow. i don't live in the southern counties wow. so watch out if you're down in essex uh oh, yes. out it's it's right. animals. god i hate them <laughs> i hate ticks so much uh, i'm in wicklow wicklow and kerry here in ireland are the two very ticky places because it's where we have the most deer i suppose uh, quite a rugged bit of landscape and so uh, a lot of ticks around here but nothing no evidence of kind of uh, how nasty the ticks are there isn't a lot of data over like you know exactly area by area of what kind of this is we we surveyed ten thousand ticks and this is what we found that'd be very useful information it wouldn't cost someone a lot to put a 20 year old science student out there picking up ticks and lyme disease <laughs> you know <laughs> it would be it'd be good information to have but uh anyway um so uh, yeah Connor, you're turning you're turning very um mellifluous and boomy and um very healthy there so oh, your yeah. new your new microphone is doing great things good yes. is a boomy oh, yeah. i don't want i don't want boomy, no no boomy's but... good no boomy i meant i meant i meant rich rich oh good oh, it's the same mic rich. you guys have and you can't control yeah. voluptuous this, which is going to start <laughs> saying <laughs> words like voluptuous yeah. soon <laughs> you want to be careful <laughs> did, guys, did you see the uh did you see the the pet food that hills pet brought out there during the week uh proudly announced on the avma and all the other um fully paid up american veterinary associations Ooh, OTC. Um, yeah onk onk pet food for cancer care yeah High in carbohydrates, you'd be delighted to hear. <laughs> they can be preserved. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> virtually, I mean, I, have, I can say this because it is very similar to their standard pet food. I was looking at their standard pet food and trying to compare the two. The side by side comparison is uh, it's hilarious. And it's just like, my God, imagine being a veterinary association promoting the food and not talking about the ingredients. I couldn't view the ingredients anywhere. Uh, I just thought it was, a, it was a big shocker. That got a lot of traction during the week. But um, anyway, that, that's what riled my boat this week. Anything exciting happened with you guys before we took in? Yes, I'll tell you what I did. I went for a, an eye test oh. on Saturday because it's five years since, uh, since I last uh, got my eyes tested, right? And I thought, oh my God, you know, you've got to, you're supposed to get them done every two years. But I thought, I'm not paying for an eye test every two years. So I went, I went along and my eyes are in exactly the same shape as they were five years ago. So, and they said that actually that I've got a slight <laughs> something and even that is not as bad. So I treated myself to some new reading glasses. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is very social media friendly. These rims are. How about that? Oh, oh, no, no. Hell. Unfortunately, they reflect the glass. we can see his screen. <laughs> okay. yeah, I know. So uh, that's, that is actually something I need to think about because when I put these on, you'll notice they don't show the screen because they've got a special thingy. So I think Ooh, I might yeah. need uh, but oh, quite funky glasses. They're very funky, yeah. yeah. I was going to so, say Elton John wants his glasses back, but I think that would be too damaging <laughs> and you won't want to hear that, so I didn't say it. <laughs> you'd be, you'd be well, glad to hear. Sensitivity. sensitivity. <laughs> I've got one other little thing to ask and uh, I've been sent very kindly by these guys and I don't Ooh. know them at, at all. This is, this is um, a powdered cbd mm. um so that they, they, they take cbd they they um put it into oil to get all the goodness out and then they they put they turn the oil into powder and this is the result because the thinking and i've spoken to one or two specialists in the area and they're saying why are you right why are you laughing Brent? <laughs> because I'm waiting for the packet of Rizzlers to come up at the same time. Oh, very good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not going to get that. So this is solid stuff. And the latest thought, which differs from what we were discussing about a year ago, is that if you if you eat it 
uh, with food, you get better absorption. You, you get less taken out by the by the liver each time because we had a we had, yes exactly we had a chat last year and the thinking last year was that if you take it away from food then and it, it's, it's absorbed in the mouth then uh when it it does go into the blood and goes through the liver which takes out most of the cbd you don't get as much you, you you get more going into the into the bloodstream because it's absorbed in the mouth however and vivian this is for you as well the latest, and I've spoken to a few people, is that if you have it with food, the latest figures, and I've got some, I've got some studies to say that you might get better absorption. So I just wanted to ask if anybody's tried this particular, it's called hempine, and if you tried it, or whether you've seen any studies for taking it with food or taking it without food, I'm very interested. Just I'd be really start. interested. I wonder if you chew it like chewing tobacco and you just sort of like put it in a pouch up inside your cheek whether you get yeah. uh, extra hit does anybody remember maybe you could the, try uh, some nick and, and let us know next week um, yeah I, I i know several um pitbull terriers with whom i could try that experiment in fact oh, I've i was tried thinking, it, I was I've, tried it I've tried it five times already and it seems to be working well does anybody remember the movie the outlaw josie wells where he used to chew tobacco all the time and spit and things and he'd spit on in a can he'd spit in a dog do you remember that movie no it's a really uh, old uh western movie there's one of the funniest scenes ever in a movie in that where he's chewing this tobacco and he's a pretty obnoxious man but he's kind of cool and uh he spits all so this guy comes up in this big white suit and it's like it's late 1800s so he goes hey sir would you like to buy my snake elixir to put hair in your head and do all this great stuff and he lists all these things and josie wells clint eastwood isn't listening he's just chewing his tobacco and he just looks at him he's goes and he spits on his chest and he goes how's it with stains <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you bring up stains, young man. Uh, yeah, those no, shorts are still living in that yeah, cupboard exactly. somewhere. <laughs> the, yeah, oh yeah, those shorts. We can't talk about them again. We've had we've, <laughs> we've a broader American audience now. We have to introduce them slowly to my Connorisms. Um, the uh, the interesting about that CBD, the, the releasing of it, because it's the same problem with iodide. We there's a great when you start trying to sell CBD supplements like I do, amazing stuff, uh, and people will always come back. One in ten questions is, oh, this is too much iodine, and what about the effect on the thyroid? And it turns out that the, the problem with iodide is that um, when it's found in nature, it's bound up in food and with fiber, and it's a slow release of iodide into the blood. And that you can eat all day. Japanese people are eating many times their RDA of, of iodine every day. No problem. In fact, if anything, probably extremely beneficial. But if you try add iodide to food from a conical flask in powder form, that's completely different. And it smashes into the bloodstream and frightens your thyroid into various issues and so it's actually the artificial supplementation of foods with thyroid now if your dog eats a whole beef thyroid you might have problems because it's going to contain a lot of stuff but uh so that's the it's the artificial isolation of the actual nutrient was causing the problem so it just goes to show you just you can't take these things out of the ingredient too easily there's usually a whole host of beneficial things particularly when it comes to hemp plants there's so much goodness in the, in the seed not just cbd there's a whole range of things it's broad spectrum multitude of vitamins and minerals to come with it as well probably all working synergistically to get the job done and um, so i love the idea of a whole food version of it i think that sounds great i'm all behind it dang we're gonna miss that thc Sorry. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. oh, you're not allowed to mention that you're not allowed to mention that <laughs> exactly no. yeah. so Look, without further ado, uh, if you want to follow us on yeah. patreon.com forward slash raw pet medics, uh, you'll get some of these juicy insights uh, and a little bit more after the show. So um, do join us on uh, patreon.com forward slash raw pet medics, uh, and we look forward to seeing you there as well. But we must crack on tonight. There's loads mm. of people joined us to know more about diabetes. So, Nick, do you want to start with a little sort of foray into what diabetes is for the majority Do you are okay i think i'm quite good at the peter and jane approach uh bren you like to give us the university approach but i think that you can't the, the what i say to people it's because i'm quite a simple kind of chap actually but yeah. what i say to people is you can't read war and peace until you can read peter and jane does everybody know what i mean by that okay our so, american friends so basically you can't read the really complex stuff until you can do the really baby stuff. And and when I was a kid, there was Peter and Jane. Um, anybody got any? Uh, what did you What did you learn to read on? Anne Brady. and Barry. Anne, Anne and Barry. Barry. Yeah. There you go. Irish names. Uh, uh, Peter and Jane. 
Peter and Jane. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so I think you get the picture. It's basically it's like Peter went to the shop, Jane went to the shop, Pat the dog was at the shop. They said hello to Pat the dog. Like, et cetera, okay? Lady Bird books. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. If you haven't seen them and you've got kids, then then buy them the uh, Lady Bird books. Anyway, so this is the Lady Bird. So why don't you want lots of sugar in your bloodstream a lot of the time? There's a thing called glycation, and basically. If you think of it, if the sugar is running around in your blood, and imagine if you've, you've got honey in the atmosphere in your kitchen, basically everything gets a coating of honey and it becomes sticky and it doesn't work properly and you can't put the spoon down on the side because it sticks to your hand and your machines get clogged up with honey and what have you. That's what happens if you're permanently perfused with glucose okay glucose sugar sugar syrup syrup glycation we did do a uh, a thing when we were talking about shanahan we were all obsessed and we still are to be honest about shanahan Catherine shanahan her book deep nutrition and she talks about glycation and essentially very simply speaking these glucose molecules go in and they just they just glue up they gum up your protein and increase rate of aging this is what happens. I remember Bren getting very excited about, about glycation. Um, end glycation, uh, what is it? Um, advanced glycation end products. Basically, the sugar buggers up your protein and you age more rapidly than you would otherwise if you didn't have loads of sugar going around. So that's why we don't like having sugar. It's the same with cats and the same with dogs. The body doesn't like loads of sugar because the body's not designed to use loads and loads of sugar on a regular basis. And the problem with diabetes, and we're talking about diabetes mellitus. Mellitus means honey, as in uh, as in honey, and, as in and honeybees. And, and, apis and, oh, oh, apis mellifica. Yes, good. <laughs> I knew there was a. I was thinking about honeymoon, <laughs> and moon, and. Uh, and mead, mead and honey, and that I couldn't get it all together in my head, brain in the same at the same moment. So um, we're talking. So so diabetes, diabetes insipidus is where you pee like mad and you drink like mad. That is water diabetes, and that's a completely different system to sugar diabetes. We're going to be talking about type one and type two diabetes, and very simply speaking, type one diabetes in humans is usually young people, children. And this is where your, 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 your pancreas just doesn't produce enough insulin. Insulin is there in order to pack away glucose and proteins into your tissues so that you've got good uh, uh, glucose metabolism and you haven't got all this sticky glucose running around in your blood the whole time. But, uh, diabetes type 2 in humans is where you produce some you know, glucose and you overproduce it day after day after day because you're eating a Western diet. And so you're, you're just pushing, screaming insulin into the system. And after a while, your, your muscles just say, enough already. I've heard what you said about insulin. I'm getting sick of you screaming at me and I'm just going to switch off and I'm not going to respond to insulin. Which And what happens is the pancreas goes, the muscles aren't listening to me. I'm going to produce even more insulin. And so you get more and more and more insulin. And it's less and less effective at packing away your, your glucose into your muscles. So you get loads of insulin. You get loads of glucose. And that is diabetes mellitus. The book to read, I'm going to give you a reference. The book to read is by Benjamin Bickman. Ben Bickman, you can see him on Instagram. does loads of Instagram stuff, loads of YouTube stuff and what have you. And it's called Why We Get Sick. And it is a wonderful description of why we get sick, because basically insulin in excess really, really, really damages your cell. It's a growth hormone and so causes problems it's linked with cancer and all sorts. And lots of glucose is really bad. So diabetes is is to be avoided at all costs. And this is why we love the raw food diet, because it's a low calorie, low carb diet, low grain carb diet. And therefore, you innately have much lower insulin and, and, and more balanced glucose. OK, there you go. That's a little a little roundup. 1916. And um, that's me for a bit. Guys. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Rosie, did you get did you get that? You are a bright boy. 
But I, you, you, if yeah, you, I've, I've got I've, I've got my I've got my head around the different two okay. different types of diabetes. I sure have. Uh, I'm not yeah. quite sure uh, if Bren wanted to elaborate on that because I think that's kind of clear enough as it is. I like you know straight out of the traps. You know, I see there's two different types of diabetes, and um, while the the I totally agree that surely, surely this is related to the Western mm. diet. Diabetes is exploding in the populations that eat high carbohydrate diets. And moreover, you can reverse type two diabetes by cutting out those uh, high carbohydrates. It's not just sugar, really. When Nick says sugar, he means like pasta essentially is sugar. Rice essentially mm. is sugar. It's not just the white granulated stuff you put in your coffee. That's uh, it's, it's gone beyond that. It's any ultra processed white flour. That's sugar. It's just zapped into sugar in your blood straight away. Too much of that drives this this issue and um, but here the the flip is that they would say first of all there hasn't been a concrete link to sugar the molecule yet and diabetes this is the this is what i feel the dry food um world stands behind and i wanted bren to kind of talk to us about cats and dogs type 1 and type 2 diabetes what's the story there and then i'll come at you with my question nick about sugar cool yeah so um it's really interesting, actually, um, because humans, we will talk a lot about type 2 diabetes just because of the obesity epidemic that um, you know, we as humans are going through. We see that in our pets, too, with all of the processed foods. And Nick sort of touched on why that might come about and actually all of the issues with insulin acting as a growth factor as well, which then sort of changes some of the fat cells to put more fat down, uh, all sorts of interesting things there. But Interestingly, cats, and we're going to talk more about this on the 17th of Feb um, with the Feline Friday. So cat mm. followers, if you want us to know more in depth, then we're going to talk about that with Dr. Amaya and um, Julianne uh, with regards to cats specifically. But we are going to touch on them tonight just to say cats like humans do tend to suffer more from type 2 diabetes, which is wonderful that, you know, they did actually produce a metabolic diet, which was higher fat, low carb, you know, good, good level of protein, uh, albeit a processed food, which actually did quite uh, a marvelous thing of improving cats to a point where you often could take them off insulin and get them back. But we saw that with raw feeding cats anyway. Um, and it just reiterated that that was the right way to go for those. And so certainly I would say for cats, you know, getting them ketogenic, and this is an important point, remind me to talk about the difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis. Okay, that's a really important thing to understand about side effects. We must talk about what can happen in diabetes symptoms. Um, but with cats, you can resolve them. And with humans, if you get them out of being obese, if you reduce their um, overdosing on sugar and therefore resensitize them to the insulin within their system, they can actually be brought back to normality without ongoing treatment. And now that may mean initially they get some insulin given to them, okay, just to get them through the rough times but ultimately you get the weight off you should be able to get cats off insulin and treat them appropriately okay as with humans with type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes is literally down to either or well, i was always taught autoimmune disease or genetic traits that are there um, i think there's a lot to say about pancreatitis and inflammation uh, in there and i think that you've got a few more additions as to why mm, they're thinking yeah. about that and we'll come to that in a moment yeah. um, but ultimately it is wiping out the islets of langerhans the, the cells within the pancreas that produce insulin as a hormone okay and ultimately meaning that they will have a um a lack of insulin in their system to be able to deal with the sugar and if you've got too much um sugar in the diet in addition to a lack of insulin to deal with that of course you're going to get rocketing levels of um, glucose and the consequences to having that so did you, in your list, I think you uh, yeah. were talking about before we went live, that um, we've got a few other things that are coming in to the causes that this, the leading to uh, diabetes in dogs. 
Yeah, absolutely. So this is a list and I will try and post it onto Patreon. Um, and this is a 2014 paper uh, by Nelson and Roosh from the University of California and the University of Zurich in Switzerland. And it's just a nice little resume of the difference between cats and dogs. And just to reiterate, uh, uh, Bren's given you a nice little rundown there. Cats tend to get, uh, get diabetes like people. They get overweight and they get um, they get an insulin resistance. Yeah, more and more. The, the, the pancreas produces more and more and more insulin and the, the, the tissues just go, no, I'm not listening. OK, whereas dogs, and we don't really know why, tend to do the the type one type diabetes which is the pancreas just produces less and less and less insulin and 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 thus you get this the problem with a lot of glucose in the blood both models the problem is too much uh, uh, glucose in the in the blood and this is why it's called diabetes mellitus because in the old days the way they used to diagnose it you know, you'd have these people in front of you and they'd just be wasting away. And the way that the old doctors used to diagnose it would be they would taste the urine from the client, from the patient, human patient, and they would say, This urine, which normally, I don't know, tastes kind of uriny and kind of slightly salty and what have you, and they would taste it and go, Bloody hell, this is sweet. So that's why it was called honey diabetes. Yeah, you waste away and you've got. Uh, sugar in your urine um anyway so just going back to this list so i'm going to look at dogs we can mm -hmm. compare cats because i think cats is quite easy because the, the the two lists are almost opposite so for for dogs i'll give you the first four genetics immune mediated insulinitis which is where the body attacks the beta cells which the beta cells produce the insulin then we've got number three is pancreatitis and number four is obesity so obesity plays into uh, 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 uh um, diabetes in dogs and yet we in dogs we get uh we get type one diabetes okay whereas in 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 humans when they they put on excessive weight they get type 2 diabetes mm. I, i'd really like to talk about that because that's that's interesting in in the article here they do mention that there is an autoimmune response because most dogs don't get uh diabetes type one in dogs until about eight years of age okay and that's by you've had time to have really you know poor metabolic function and i think that increased triglycerides in the presence of high grain carb and connor i'm sure you've got something to say about that because we've been increasing the amount of of grain carbohydrates in kibbles and things like this over the last 30 50 years and thus we've got increased triglycerides therefore we get more stress and for me this is my personal theory we get more stress on the pancreas and thus the pancreas is, is is more inflamed and thus is more likely to have autoimmune effects now i'm sure the specialists will go absolutely nuts when i say that but it kind of rings true for me so top four for dog is genetics immune mediated insulinitis yeah so this is autoimmune disease pancreatitis which we know is very common and is related to high tr triglycerides and obesity whereas with cats We've got islet amyloidosis, so deposition of fatty proteinaceous material in the in the in the pancreas. We've then got obesity. Okay, obesity and, pan and, and uh, diabetes is big with humans, and then we've got pancreatitis. So it's number three in both of the both the cat and the dog, which is interesting. And then we've got uh, hormonal disease, which includes hyperthyroidism in cats, dogs hypo uh hypo oh no it actually says hyperthyroidism i think that's a typo yeah, yeah that's pretty rare dogs. very Surely. rarely get hyper no. i think that's a typo i've only just seen it we'll call it hypothyroidism because jean dodds in her book uh the canine thyroid epidemic um uh she does mention that 
if you've got thyroid disease that can predispose to diabetes and all sorts of metabolic disease um Connor, you were saying that you've got some stuff yeah. the last 30, 40 years or so. Yeah, like, you know, I think there's a, I don't, I don't trust a lot of the information out there on diabetes for a very good reason, because, you know, there is a very big effort made in um, the world today to keep the idea that sugar or diet is the cause of diabetes and may possibly be the solution because there's an enormous industry around diabetes and that's just a fact okay it's an extremely profitable lifelong drugs is what it's about uh, for pharma and so if if there's a lifelong drug to be had believe me the solution to that you know, is for, like diabetes too it's, it's a it's quite a quite a simple so, it's not solution but you can certainly help a lot more than the drugs do so look I, I, before I get into the darkness, um, the uh, here's some stats on the rate of increase in diabetes one, which was you know up until recently, oh, it's just a genetic issue, it's an autoimmune disease. The prevalence of diabetes in dogs presented to veterinary teaching hospitals increased from 19 cases per 10,000 uh, in 1970 to 64 cases per 10,000 by 1999. From 2006 to 2016. 2.5 million U.S. dogs were surveyed and it revealed that canine diabetes increased by 80% in that time. So it doubled again from 2006 to 2016. So the rates are positively exploding. Cats actually far quicker than dogs. But there's a whole cacophony of reasons of why that it might be. And there's some really legitimate ones. Nick's gone through them all. But coming back to the diet and the carb thing, it's very interesting that if you go through the literature on a human literature, they say that there is no definite causal link between, you know, um, uh, sugar. They always say sugar, not carbohydrates, and, and diabetes too. But like the when you look at these associations that are making these statements, um, here comes a bit of the darkness. Uh, the U.S., for example, the U.S. government were involved recently. Uh, they wanted to, there was an average, they, they said the Americans were eating 100 pounds, 100 pounds LB of sugar per year. And the U.S. Department of Agriculture came in and tweaked the way they were analyzing how many pounds of sugar they're eating. They dropped it down to 80 pounds of sugar. This was covered by the New York Times by Dr. Michael Jacobson, um, executive director of the Center for Science. Uh, what they found was the New York Times dug further and revealed an email from Jack Roney, the then director of economics and policy analysis at the American Sugar Alliance. It's a thing. It sounds like something by Darth Vader, where he states, we perceive it to be in our interest to see as low a uh, per capita sweetener consumption estimate as possible. So if you were to be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, you'd say, oh, they really are trying to hide the sugar consumption and they just can't seem to find a causal link between sugar, high carbohydrate diets. But we know since 1970, diabetes has been exploded in the pet population exactly when obesity took off. So they say that like uh, sugar doesn't cause diabetes. There's no link. And it's like standing around and saying there's an increase in car crashes and someone saying cars don't cause car crashes. And you go, what? And they'll say, well, have you ever seen a car? It just it just sits at the side of the road. It's not the car's fault it gets in the crash. It's what happened and who was driving the car. And you go, well, of course, you know, that, that's the case. But to say that sugar or carbo carbohydrate, ultra processed food is not behind this diabetes issue, certainly type two is is absolutely ridiculous it's been hidden from me the same way vitamin d was clearly something we should have been doing during the latest crisis and now all oh, this huge study that came out in the last few months said it would have saved thousands of lives had this very simple approach been taken it was hidden from us because it's a very simple cost-free way of tackling it and so it's, it doesn't do in my opinion to have a diet solution so when i see studies coming out on you know uh the obesity being very low down Obesity is well up there. I mean, if you look at the Hills Prescription Diet for uh, diabetes, have you looked at the ingredients in this? Hills Prescription Diet, bearing in mind all the studies show the, the, more, the less carbohydrates you feed a cat and dog, the less carbohydrates you feed a cat and dog, the more protein, the better they do in terms of diabetes management. Okay, so we have those studies. And Hills Prescription Diet food contains, um, what the, listen, just listen to this spiel specially formulated to help regulate the glucose supply. That's nice for a change. It can also support a reduction in body weight and obese cats. Oh, hurrah, after who caused it. Um, low energy food and, and this kind of stuff. So we say, what is in this magic formula that they're making? There's no available sugars in this food. So I think, oh, okay, this sounds good. And they've added in L-carnitine. And you go to the ingredients. Do you know what the number one ingredient is in this high protein, 48% protein in fairness? It's only about maybe 20% carbohydrates. 48% protein, which is a luxurious amount of protein compared to the usual crap they churn out. And what's the number one ingredient? Maize gluten meal. 
Maize gluten meal is an indigestible protein source. You can't, you get, it's completely not available to the dog. The bioavailability of corn gluten is the stuff that comes out in your poo that, you know, you can't digest. So they put this in there. Why do they make that the number one ingredient? Because they suddenly have to make a high protein diet. And God forbid they should give these meat eaters more meat in their diet that they could digest. They give them shit that they can't digest. So now a large portion of the protein in that food is not available to your dog since Crogdale Eight Island 2016 showed that a lot of like 30% of the protein in puppy foods isn't available to the puppies and they're already at the minimum intake. So that drops them below the minimum. This is dire, but I suppose in a way you want your, your animal to lose weight. That's one way to do it if 20% of it is tissue, you know. So this Hills prescription diet for which 48% protein, number one uh, corn gluten meal. The second ingredient is chicken and turkey meal, 30% chicken and turkey meal. And bioavailability of protein, how easy it is to digest, is really important in diabetes because, you know, it's digesting all this crap that they're trying to consume. The pancreas. And the pancreas is already struggling. So the dream would be the pancreas has a nice, easy to di di digest meal. And it, the last thing is it calls into question ultra-processed food, overcooking these foods or even cooked foods at all because it annihilates the enzymes in the food. And the pancreas is struggling. So you're trying to help us uh, give it nice meals and the nice meals do not begin with corn gluten meal, number one, and chicken and turkey meal, number two. But it does show that they're at least reading the literature and saying high carbohydrate diets are the problem here. And the solution is clearly backing away from carbohydrates as they did. So little rant out of the way. Um, I just a lot of bullshit out there, um, I think, when it comes to this uh, issue. Mm. Mm. Breed, Connor, I see you. Right. Uh, yeah, Breed. yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to say again, a really good uh, uh, resume of this is the Ben Bickman, Why We Get Sick. It's all about human um, insulin and diabetes and all that we'll stuff. We'll post that book yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that, it's, think, it's, it's, it's a biggie. Yeah. It's a real biggie and it's, it's a delight to read. The other one is uh, The Case Against Sugar by Gary Taubes, which is kind of, it's like the Bible. Uh, that's a really, you know, if you've got a big yeah. long journey or a holiday or something, that's the one you want to get into. It's really nice. As long as you're not driving. Uh, no, 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 no. He's, he tells a great story. He's No, is, he's all right. It's Gary. Okay. I will hear no bad said of Gary Taubes. <laughs> he's coming out with a new book soon, apparently. Oh. Yes, oh. yes. I've got another oh, book. Look, I'm not even going to mention it. We've got some great stuff to keep going after this on Patreon. Yes. So do join yes, us yes, on yes. patreon.com forward slash raw pet medics if you want to know a little bit more about and hear some more Connor rants because I, I mm. see a massive raft of people <laughs> wanting to go, <laughs> Connor. Um, so, yeah. but we need to touch because so many people are asking symptoms and why people why they get um, cataracts. So we really should touch on uh, some of the general symptoms out there. The, okay. the main one, and hence the picture for tonight, which was dog drinking, is just an insatiable thirst and a massive drive, therefore, to produce urine as the sugar su sucks the fluid out of the body in the urine. So um, that's going to be your number one. You've got a really thirsty dog. You know, you've got loads of urine being produced. And as Nick says, then dip your finger in and taste it and if it's now i was joking don't do that <laughs> just how many wees do they toe? have to taste like yeah. before <laughs> before they taste the sugar you do they have to do like five and all go normal wee that's normal we taste that one. Oh yeah that's it and then oh, i've diverted sure. already no. <laughs> first story when we go to patreon i've got a really lovely medical schools school yeah, yeah. story about so, stools, stools, okay. story. <laughs> no no please. don't taste no, schools. we're not going Listen, that end as well <laughs> remind me first one when we get to patreon i've got a really nice little story okay, okay so on. symptoms uh, so that's the first one lots of thirst um now it has to be differentiated from kidney disease cushing's uh, thyroid even i've seen dogs that get pupd um live liver disease there's so many other things you know getting a, a, a you know for females pyometra so any purulent um uh, endotoxic disease that can cause problems so please lots of differentiation so don't just assume that it's diabetes if it's drinking loads and urinating loads see your vet okay and it is all day but, Pam. it's an all day yeah. they just can't they yeah. can't help themselves yeah so i mean even actually you know we had one in the other day somebody came in my dog is drinking loads urinating loads what was it it was on a high salty processed diet OK, ah. it's just that they, you know, 
hadn't realized how much salt was in that particular i couldn't believe the amount of salt that was in that diet but anyway that's another matter so um that's the first thing so the easiest thing to do it's probably the cheapest thing to do is to collect some urine take it into your vets if you haven't got strips of your own dip test it and check if the, there's lots of glucose that pretty much should line you up with okay we've got to start investigating why this dog or cat has loads of glucose in the urine probably diabetes mellitus okay and that's probably the simplest thing to look at um, now be warned if you take blood of a stressed cat then its glucose will probably be through the roof just because of stress releasing uh, causes the body to release glucose ready for utilization it is not necessarily going to be diabetic if the urine is negative that is not a diabetic cat it's a stressed cat and i have seen also if uh, dogs are fed and have bloods taken again especially if it's a processed diet you will see glucose raised uh, within that uh, dog's blood. It is not because they're diabetic. It is probably because they've just been fed. If their urine is still negative, okay, for glucose, then it is not diabetic. How long should so they fast for, Brian? Out. Sorry? How long should they fast for? Uh, so eight to 12 hours. I think the easiest thing is do an overnight fast, test them in the morning, okay? So, you know, if they've eaten their tea at eight o'clock the night before, they're going into the vets for a test in the morning, that's gonna be just after eight o'clock. You know, they're not really gonna be pestering you too much through the night for food. So that's the easiest time to fast them. It also means that you're unifying when you take bloods on the animal to being in the morning, and therefore they are comparable every time you look at them. Whereas if you start testing at all times of day, then all sorts of things change, such as when their natural body steroids are released, you know, their normal processes. And if you add the complexity of feeding them into that, then it can absolutely turn bloods upside down as far as what's going on. People have come to me saying, my dog's liver and kidneys are failing and, you know, it's steroids was through the roof. It must have Cushing's, you know, and you look at that and you just say, well, was it starved? No, I was never told to starve it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, well, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. You know, stress levels, let alone all of the um, the organs all over the case, because they're just trying to help deal with the food that you've fed. So, yeah. so don't you get mixed you, up with that. If you have the case, guys, if you, have, if, if you are looking at a diagnosis of diabetes in your, ca in your cat, say, start off, Bren, give us two minutes on what you would do with uh, diabetes in your cat, and then Nick can do diabetes in your dog, and then I've got a tip. Okay, uh, well, I, um, I will go very quickly on that. There is some other symptoms we need to talk about, because um, we will need go to talk it. about cataracts and stuff. Um, so you understand if you've got high glucose in your bloodstream for a long period of time, that glucose will leach out into any other body fluids. And you may find that it will build up in the eye. If it leaches into the lens of the eye, that draws fluid into it, into a relatively uh, dehydrated protein structure that makes it clear. Okay. And as soon as you swell it, with fluid it will start to um, damage the cells within the lens that can lead then on to cataracts but just ah. swelling it will mean that the light is refracted through the through the lens rather than actually get passing through to the retina so they look quite blue quite quickly and then further damage will mean that they start to scar and you'll actually get true cataracts Okay. Ah, but if your dog really has cataracts, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've got, di got diabetes. diabetes. And okay. a simple urine test can rule them in, rule them out. Yeah, just yep. as a simple yep. thing. Okay. Yeah. So back to cats. So for cats, um, if they're urinating urine... Now, one thing for cats as well is that you will probably also be monitoring and checking with something called fructosamine. This is protein-bound glucose okay uh within the bloodstream and it doesn't vary as sharply as the glucose the pure glucose level so sometimes we have to look at fructosamine levels to check if they are balanced okay rather than looking at glucose levels in that case hmm. um so if they've got urine and uh, glucose in the urine they've got symptoms if they're overweight 
then we'll be strongly suspicious of um, them having type 2 diabetes. Um, if they've got no history of chronic pancreatitis or other inflammatory processes, IBD-like symptoms, so inflammatory bowel disease symptoms, then you know those would be occasions when we think type 2. If they've got those inflammatory conditions, we'd think possibly type 1. But we generally will try and stabilize them as quickly as possible because if we don't they are at risk of the liver suddenly utilizing all of the fats to generate ketones and that becomes quite acidotic so it increases the um, acid levels within the blood and that can damage the tissues and cause all sorts of problems uh, from seizures all the way through to um, you know massive vomiting diarrhea dehydration um you know they can be in a really sorry way if they get to that point so we do need to try and stabilize them quite quickly and this is a time to sometimes have to embrace using insulin at that point whilst we then can come in with dietary change you know improving the diet that we want to touch on before we get too much further in and you know reducing any inflam inflammation uh, and being able to monitor carefully what's happening with their glucose so that we can start to reduce their insulin as they no longer need it okay so that's a, a tapering down that level of insulin um, you can these days which you couldn't when I qualified, uh, start looking at their actual blood insulin levels so you can start to look at what they're like. So if they're sky high and they've got sky high glucose, okay, and fructosamine, then you look at, that's another way of telling that they are probably insulin resistant, i.e. got type 2 diabetes. That's my brief. Nick, go for dogs. Okay, I'm going to do even briefer on on dogs. If if you've got a dog and they're drinking like mad and they're peeing like mad and um, they might or might not be overweight, then I think get to the vet, take a, a a urine sample. If it's warm, even better, fresh urine samples because they will degrade pretty rapidly. And just say to them, you know, please can you can you have a look at the dogs? And please, can you um, uh, test the urine? OK, so if in doubt, just take a urine sample. What's there to lose? Make sure that the jam jar is really, 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 really clean, because if you've got a little bit of jam left in jam jar, you will suddenly have given your dog diabetes because there will be sugar in the urine from the jam. Just a little word to the wise. OK, so uh, I, I think it really it's as simple as that. If, if the dog is drinking like mad and peeing like mad, and there is any suspicion that I think get along to the vets. They will, with a urine sample, they will take a blood to confirm or refute the idea that there may be diabetes and they will begin a, a, a treatment with um, insulin. Because remember, in dogs, it's usually pan type one pancreatitis, which is the, your pancreas is giving up the ghost from giving from, from producing insulin. And so you just have to, you have to supplement that insulin. It's much more difficult to treat using diet, using lots of other things than, than cats. There's a lovely vet, there was a lovely vet. He's now retired, still going. Tom, if you're watching, then then hello to you. Tom Farrington in, in Ireland. And he said he had no cats in his practice with diabetes because he just managed weight, put them on a raw food diet and they all got better. That was his quote. But with dogs, it's, it's, it's more tricky. So I would suggest do see your local vet and get a diagnosis. And then do see a local uh, uh, um, raw food vet in order to optimize diet. You know, everybody can benefit from having the best diet possible. And, and, and as far as we're concerned, that is a raw food diet with zero grains in it, with, with a moderate amount of uh, green and, and, and proper, fresh, highly nutritious uh, uh, uh vegetable material um and that's the basis of it that would that would be my very very simple summary um any final uh, thoughts yeah, but the, I, uh, yeah. I, I the, the, I the, the, the difference between uh, like one and two and in, in cats you know you, you, a nutritional role is really important to focus on and so your higher fat diets your moderate protein and you're, you're getting rid of your carbs because if you're in ketosis even protein can 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 be a bit of an issue so the higher fat diets are very well tolerated they're just easy to manage any vet can give you a bit of simple advice on that with dogs it's not like you're going to have this complete turnaround 
time by getting the diet spot on because as Nick said, the actual cells are knackered and it's, they're not going to come back just because we feed spot on. It's, n- it's not a reason to aggravate it. But there's another thing you can add into uh, these diets now is pancreas. Pancreas, it's not just uh, insulin. Uh, you won't get any insulin by feeding pancreas. Pa- insulin is protein-based, so the dog is expected to digest a lot of it. Not a lot of it is expected to hit the intestines. But you can feed small amounts of pancreas to a dog, say 2% of the diet, particularly uh, for, for the fact that it contains digestive enzymes. If you've got a, a pancreas that's kind of knackered and struggling, feeding it pancreas, it's not just di- digestive enzymes. I hid this. I um, highlighted this paragraph from um, this awesome book that I wrote there. I'm not sure if anybody saw it. <laughs> but, um, so listen to this. The pancreas, also it's not just uh, insulin that this organ contains. The pancreas also produces glucagon, which assists in blood glucose levels. Amylin, which controls how fast the gut empties and ultimately the food intake, as well as pancreatic and vasoactive of polypeptides which function in various good contractions anyway on and on notably uh, some notably the protein based one um uh, but many do make it through uh, in, including all the steroids ones so these are the um protein based kind of hormones that get through uh, but most importantly is the enzymes present in the organ so when you have a pancreas that's struggling you may need to add digestive enzymes it's 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 just to help with the digestion of the food this is an insulin thing we're talking about absolutely but feeding pancreas but the point is, it comes at you with five or six different offerings. So why wouldn't you put this organ in? Find so, it fresh and raw is hard, buy it dry, and you can add it into the food like salt or pepper. So we're going to talk more on Patreon about this, but something really useful for the guys out there is to know that for humans, looking at that adipokines, which is things like added adiponectin, which is one of the peptides, taking these orally are becoming a new way of trying to help those humans with diabetes. Okay, so uh, now we know for dogs, it's not quite as simple as that. There's some things going on that means they're not necessarily reflected of that, but they have anti-inflammatory properties too. Um, And so all of those peptides can be really, really useful, Connor. So some of those pancreas um items that you've just talked about there may well be feeding into a natural way of accessing those peptides rather than necessarily um having to artificially that's interesting yeah so that's really so we're going to talk more about that last but not least somebody asked about why raw food feeding could still help you know the diabetic patient okay and i um you know they talk about increasing fiber for you know the conventional processed foods and it's full of you know undigestible stuff that delays absorption of sugars i do use raw personally for that because it reduces the sugar load it spreads things out it allows them access to energy through their fat metabolism um yes using if we add any fiber at all then i would tend to look at things like butternut squash or something like that as a long chain uh, fiber but i think just making it more of a fiber source you still need some insulin within the system for other purposes it's another it has loads of other hormonal activities including growth factors etc for maintaining muscle mass Um, You need some degree of glucose to create um, the uh, glycogen with uh, stores because otherwise you'll get a really tired dog. But I think the majority can be dealt with by moving them to a low inflammatory diet by being raw and fresh. Awesome. I've I've got a an announcement just at the end. The lovely Penny said that she is once again. She did. She came on uh, with us mm, uh, when August ish last year, um, and she is uh, pet and parent longevity and they are doing another pet and parent longevity summit. And it's Look at and that. it started, I think, yesterday, and it's going on. So pet and parent longevity dot com. Pet free, and parent free to view, guys. Com. The pe- the people in that are it's all free to view. So uh, it's um it's you shouldn't miss it. And it's free. And Rita Hogan is there. Odette Suter is there. Julianne Lee from Adored Beast is there. And my amazing osteopath called uh, Tony Nevin is there. He's a guy to talk to. He's got some stories. And and so that's really going to be good. So that's for you, Penny. Great stuff. Cool. Okay, guys, are we going to jump over to yes, the thing we call Patreon? I have some I have some darkness from the Diabetes Associations in the UK and the US. Good. I can't wait to share it with you. Good. It's juicy. 
Bad. Well, we hope you've enjoyed tonight. Look, next week uh, we have some more on emotion and, and interaction heart. with our dogs because it's going to be the wonderful Valentine's evening. I hope that we're not going to be distracting you away from your loved ones. Uh, but do come and join us. If we are their loved ones. To, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Connor. Um, and um, for the week after that, we've got Caroline. Yes, Ingram, Ingram on 21st. Gonna, it's going to come and join us. Yes, yes, indeed. Perfect. Yeah, yes. Uh, marvelous, remember, marvelous. if you want to know more about cats on the 17th, that's a feline Friday. We're going to also deal with diabetes, a bit more detail for cats. Uh, yeah. So please, if you're interested in cats, join us. Uh, also, we're going to be part of the uh, Give Cats a Voice uh, conference on the Saturday, the 25th and 26th. Um, so I'm on the 26th, I think, with Amaya. Um, so do have a look at that. And we've also got the Dog Training College. Cool, we've got a busy February. Oh, yeah, yeah I know. Wow, we're packing it? it in this yeah. month. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Get on my my so, fresh material already. Absolutely. If you, if you want to find us at one of those uh, uh, conferences or occasions, please come join us. Um, otherwise, look look forward to seeing you next week. The Patreon lovers, please come and join us when we release this in about an hour or so. Yeah. Perfect. Take care, guys. Adios. Ciao, guys. Talk Thank you. Too soon.